So in this video, we're going to calculate a Taylor polynomial for the function of sine of x at pi over 3. Now, the formula for a Taylor series always got three important things. The degree of the polynomial, which in our case is five terms, so it's degree five, so n is five. At point a, and our polynomial is at pi over 3, so the point is pi over 3, so a will be pi over 3. And the function is sine of x. And then we've got the generic formula for Taylor polynomial here, uh, which we've seen before, seen this in all of my videos. I'll just go through again for you. In here, all the a's is where we're calculating it for. So all the a's here will become pi over 3. So the value of sine of pi over 3 will be the first term. First derivative at a, so that's the first derivative of pi over, th pi over 3 divided by 1 factorial. And x minus a will become x minus pi over 3. Then the next one you'll have the second derivative calculated for pi over 3 divided by 2 factorial. And then x minus pi over 3 as a is pi over 3 and then squared. Then you'll see there's a pattern forming. Uh, 2 here, a 2 here and a 2 here. So second derivative 2 factorial squared. Then the next one will be third derivative 3 factorial x minus a cubed. And the fourth one is 4, a 4, and a 4, and a 5, 5, and 5. Okay, so moving on, we're going to substitute all the a's for pi over 3, and all the n's will become 5. So, so we're going to differentiate the function sine of x 5 times, and calculate the value of each of those derivatives at pi over 3. So here we go. So we're going to draw up a little table here. So we've got the function of sine of x. And the value of sine of x at pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So that's our first calculation. And then down this line here, we're going to calculate the first five derivatives of sine of x. And here we're going to value, evaluate all those derivatives at pi over 3. So our first derivative so that is derivative of sine, which is cosine. And cosine at pi over 3 equals a half. So that's our value there. Then for the second derivative, we take the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine. And we've already calculated sine to be root 3 over 2. So minus sine is minus root 3 over 2. So that's the second derivative at pi over 3. The third derivative will obviously be taking the derivative of minus sine. Well, we know the derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of minus sine will be minus cosine. So minus cosine at pi over 3 is minus a half. Because we knew here that cosine of pi over 3 is a half. So minus cosine of pi over 3 is minus a half. And then the fourth and fifth derivatives, you'll see we're back to sine and cosine again. Now, when you're differentiating sine, you will get this pattern, sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine. And then you get sine, cosine, minus sine, and minus cosine. And on again, calculating the value of those derivatives, again, they will be repeated from earlier. So this first one will then end up in here. The second one will end up in here. So this pattern will go on all the way down the list for as many terms as you wanted to find. OK, so next step, we've calculated all our derivatives. And now we're going to break down the Taylor uh, polynomial formula and just uh, try and do it one stage at a time. So now all the a's I've put in for pi over 3. So you can see now it's looking quite busy and uh, quite uh, intimidating. If it's the first time you've seen something like this. So not don't worry about it. We just continue on one step at a time. So put all the pi's over 3's. And we've also calculated what all these mean in these derivatives here. So the next stage is, now we've written it out, we can start to input all those values. So f of pi over 3, we can put root 3 over 2. The first derivative at pi over 3, we know is a half. So we can put in a half there. The second derivative, minus root 3 over 2. So we could put minus root 3 over 2 in there. And same here, minus a half. Fourth derivative, you see root 3 over 2, you can put in there. And the fifth derivative is a half, which you can put in there. OK, so let's put some of that stuff in there now and then see where it takes us. So the first term we've got is root 3 over 2. 
because that's this value here. And then the second term, which is obviously this one leading to this one, the first derivative of pi over 3 was a half. So there's our half, 1 and the 2, and then times by 1 factorial in the denominator, which is what we've got here, and then times x minus pi over 3. The second term, the derivative was minus root 3 over 2. So there we go. There's our minus root 3 over 2 and times by 2 factorial. So and then x minus pi over 3 squared, which we'd already calculated here. So now the third derivative we calculated was minus a half. So we've got minus a half here times 3 factorial and then x minus pi over 3 cubed. The fourth derivative we calculated was root 3 over 2, and root 3 over 2 is here, and that's multiplied by 4 factorial in the denominator, and x minus pi over 3 to the 4. And then again, the fifth derivative was a half, so here is our half, times by 5 factorial, and x minus pi over 3 to the power of 5. So now we can simplify some of this stuff out, because we know that 5 factorial is 120, so 2 times 120, we could just put the number in there. This one is 2 times 24, which is 48. So that would be root 3 over 48. But we could get rid of the root 3 on the top and put it on the bottom by multiplying by root 3 on the top and bottom and then substitute and then dividing everything by 3. So let's see what that all comes to now. So now the root 3 over 2 stays. So that stays there. The x minus pi over 3, that can now come onto the top. And then the 2 times 1 factorial can be 2. So that's how we will get to this term here. The next one here, we've got 2 times 2 factorial, which is 4. So then we've got root 3 over 4, but it's a minus. So we can substitute this plus for a minus sign. So that's how we get the minus sign here. Then root 3, x minus pi over 3 squared, divided by 4. So that's how we get to that one. Then the, the x minus pi over 3 cubed sits along 2 times 3 factorial. Well, 2 times 3 factorial is just 1 times 2 times 3, and then 2 times that, which is 12. So then that becomes minus 1 twelfth. So instead of putting the minus 1 up there, we just flip this sign here to a minus sign, take it from that plus 1, and then 12 on the denominator. And then the next term, We've got root 3, 2 times 4 factorial over 48. So 4 factorial is 24, 2 times 24 is 48. So then we've got root 3 over 48. And then finally here, we've got 1 divided by 2 times 5 factorial. Well, 2 times 5 factorial is 240, because 5 factorial is 120. 120 times 2 is 240. So that's how we get to that one there. So this is our final answer for the Taylor polynomial of degree 5 for sine of x at pi over 3. And there it is. OK, thanks for watching. Any comments, leave in the box down below. And uh, as always, please remember to subscribe. Thank you very much.